Silva. So, I've been hearing some strange noises outside now for a bit. I'll open the window to show you. It's really strange. Listen. It's not an animal, is it? just made that sound. Did you hear a loud boom earlier today? Several people heard and felt a loud noise around 12.30 Central Time this afternoon. All over Carter County took to social media about a loud boom that shook their homes and workplaces around 10.15 this morning. So I ran to the back door and looked out, but I didn't see anything. We've heard Jesus is coming. Um, <laughs> We've heard lots of things. In Sweden, this sure sounds like a trumpet. In Michigan, another trumpet-like sound. And are there any other potential explanations for what these people are calling skyquakes? Well, the problem I have with there being other explanations is the amount of energy required to create that kind of sound is beyond some guy out in the woods. The most powerful radio stations in the United States, I think they're 50,000 watts. And the amount of power that HARP has, it puts out that is published is around 3 million watts. It'd be very difficult to duplicate it. Enough power. One popular explanation for all of these strange sounds being heard around the world is some people believe they are angels. They are the seven angels sounding the seven trumpets, which is talked about in Revelation. Now, before I tell you whether I believe these are the seven angels, first, we need to know just what are these seven trumpets. And I promise you this, it will scare some of you. It will scare some of you very greatly. When the first angel sounds his trumpet, hailstones and fireballs mingled with blood will be cast down to earth and 33% of all the world's trees will be burned up and so will the green grass, it will be no more. When the second angel sounds his trumpet, a large big mountain on fire, something huge will fall from the sky and fall straight down into the sea. At that very moment, the sea will be turned to blood, just like in the days of Moses, and millions and millions of sea creatures will die, and a third of all the world's ships will be sunk. Now let me ask you a question. Does that sound like those strange sounds that we've been hearing very recently? Well, before we make a clear decision, let's first consider this mind-blowing fact. When the third angel sounds his trumpet, the Bible says a vast, huge star will come crashing down to the earth and will pollute many of the waters of the earth. Many of the fresh water systems will taste bitter. What is the name of this star? It's called Wormwood. But if you have a Ukrainian Bible in front of you, some translations of the Ukrainian Bible say this word, Wormwood, can also mean Chernobyl. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that? Very interesting. And if you visit Chernobyl for any reason you decide to go there, if you stand in the town center, there you will find the Chernobyl Star Memorial. What is the Chernobyl Star Memorial? Well, it's an angel blowing a trumpet. But we're gonna come back to that in a moment's time. When the fourth angel sounds his trumpet, the Bible says that the third of the light that is given out by the sun, the moon and the stars will be darkened. It's almost as if God has said to the people, okay, for your whole life you've said, I choose darkness over the light of Christ. I choose my sin and to hide in the shadows over being in the light of God's word. If you want to live like that, fine, you can have darkness. And some Bible commentators believe that this particular judgment could be describing a nuclear winter where literally millions and millions of tons of soot have been emitted into the stratosphere that it's nearly impossible for direct sunlight to reach down to earth and things get colder, things get darker, crops begin to fail and people find it very hard to survive. 
But over to you. What do you think? Do you think so far that these trumpets are sounding like the same sounds that people have been hearing around the world recently? Well, before I reveal to you my answer on all of this, first, you must know this. The Bible says that just after the fourth trumpet sounds, an angel or an eagle in other translations will fly across the earth and say, these last four trumpets, they've been nothing compared to what is about to come. These last three trumpets will break the earth and destroy it and change it more than anything else you have ever seen. When the fifth angel sounds his trumpet, the Bible says, John says, I saw a star fallen from heaven. This is the same star that Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning from heaven. Lucifer, the morning star. And then Jesus will meet Lucifer, it says, and Christ, the one who holds the key to death and Hades, will hand over that key to Lucifer and he will give him permission to open up the bottomless pit. The darkest, worst part of hell will be open. This is the same place when Jesus, when he met that demon-possessed man and he cast the demons out of that man, those demons begged Jesus and said, please do not send us down into the abyss. So instead, Christ thrust them into a herd of pigs. This is the same abyss, this is the same dark place that in Genesis 3 we read about these fallen angels who left their boundaries and did wicked things with human beings and they were cast down into this bottomless pit, bound into chains of gloomy darkness. And Lucifer is going to open this bottomless pit and out will come a demonic army of locusts. These locusts will cause agony on all the men and women of the earth. So much so that all these men and women who rejected the Lord Jesus Christ will cry out and say, let us die. We long for death, but death will flee them. And for five months, these men and women will be tortured by this wicked, cruel, seductive army of locusts. And they only obey one master. Their captain is Apollyon, the devil, Lucifer himself. When the sixth angel sounds his trumpet, a vast army of 200 million people will begin marching to Armageddon. And this is incredible again, because when John was writing this thousands of years ago, there wasn't even 200 million people on the face of the earth. But God showed John the future and showed him the largest army that would ever be. And at the same time, at the river Euphrates in Babylon itself, four terrifying angels are going to be set free. They're going to be set loose to eliminate a third of all mankind. All the men and women who have chosen to make allegiance with Babylon, who have said, I want nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, who have put their trust in the epicenter of evilness itself, they will be removed from the face of the earth. Okay, in just a moment's time, we're going to discover whether these strange sounds are the same trumpet sounds in Revelation. But first, let's hear from the final angel. When the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, the kingdoms of this world will evaporate and Christ's kingdom will reign forevermore. The Antichrist, the false prophet, loose for himself, will all be crushed and hell will be their destination for all of eternity. And then the Bible says something beautiful. It says almost as if the curtains of heaven will be open and there we will see the temple of God, the true Ark of the Covenant, and there God's people will fall on their face, will be in awe. The 24 elders will work worship the Son of God and there we will reign with the Lord Jesus Christ for all of eternity. So, hey now, I said to you I would tell you whether I thought these strange sounds that are being heard in the sky, whether they are the same as the seven trumpets in Revelation. Now, I could be totally wrong about this. Again, I say that as I say in every video, but personally, I don't see the evidence for it to stand up to that massive claim. Because when we look at these seven trumpets and we see the rock of God and how terrible it's going to be. We haven't seen anything yet. We might think that the world we live in is bad and dreadful now, but the truth is this. This is a picnic compared to what God is going to bring down on this world to all those who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And really, that's why I desperately want to take you back to the third angel. I want you to think about this particular word, Wormwood or Chernobyl in other translations. This great big star turned the 
sweet waters into bitterness. But when we look at the life of Moses, we see things the opposite way round. You see, Moses, when he delivered the people of Israel, through the Lord's power of course, when he brought them out of Egypt, after three days, the people of Israel began to complain. They began to threaten Moses and say, give us something to drink. And so Moses eventually led them to this vast pool of water called Marah. And the people were so excited, they ran down to the water and they began to drink of this water because they were so thirsty until they spat it out, realising that these waters were just nothing more than bitterness. It was a bitter kind of water. So then Moses cried out to the Lord, Lord, how do I help this people? What do I do? And God set his eyes upon a tree. So Moses picked up that tree and he threw it into the waters of Marah. And suddenly, those waters of bitterness turned to sweetness. And my dear precious believer, isn't that a beautiful picture of the cross? The Lord Jesus Christ, who hung on a tree for our forgiveness, who takes us out of all of that bitter water that we drink so often, that unclean water, the impure things we drink, the impure things that we bathe ourselves in, and instead, he leads us to his living water and allows us to drink his sweet, precious water and gives us eternal life, those flowing rivers of eternal life. But again, that word wormwood is screaming out to me because when we read David's messianic psalms, we hear the Lord Jesus Christ speaking of his crucifixion. He says, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. Here is the mighty God of the universe, and yet he's willing to condescend, to come down to be nothing but a weak, despised worm. I mean, think about it. Does anyone feel guilty about standing on a worm that's crawling across a path? No, worms are seen as nothing, and yet Jesus did that to ensure that you and I might have a salvation. Now, perhaps you didn't know this, but in the animal kingdom, there's the most fascinating creature called the scarlet worm. And what this worm does is when it wants to give birth, it ties itself to a tree. And as it lays its eggs, it dies. But at the same time as dying, it secretes a, a crimson red dye, which stains the tree red. And because this dye is so bright, it's so vibrant, native people around, they would collect the worms, they would collect the eggs, and they would use it as a way of staining and dyeing their own clothes, as a way of selling them on and having nice, brightly red colored clothing. And just like the scarlet worm, Jesus Christ, his blood stained the wood red. His blood was poured out for many on that cross so that you and I could be forgiven. And just like that worm dies so it might give life to another, Jesus died so that he might give life to you, everlasting life. And my dear friend, if God was willing to let his son come into this world and to be tortured on that cross for your salvation, for your forgiveness, if he watched his son being crushed on the cross and enduring all of that for you, how do you think the almighty Father God will deal with you if you join the billions who trample on the Lord Jesus Christ and say, that salvation means nothing to me? Do you not think that you deserve the wrath that is coming and all of that pain and suffering that we've just talked about before, that is why God is going to be so angry. So I plead with you right now, while the gentle saviour has his arms open wide and said, I died for you, come, take this forgiveness, take this eternal life, I beg you to run into his arms because there will be a day when mercy is cut off. Okay, I did say to you that I was gonna come back and tell you all about those fallen angels that we read about in Genesis 3. Well, if you want to hear probably my most shocking teaching on all of this channel, please watch this video here, because you will be shocked by what these guys did. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I can sincerely look you in the face right now and say, I am so glad that you've taken the time to watch this video, and I really want the privilege of being able to show you more things in the Bible, if God grants me that privilege. God bless you all, and thank you for watching.